With a little over the month since the release of Gears 5, and as we are heading into the last week of the qualifiers for the PGL Pro League, I believe that this is a perfect time to look over Escalation 2.0. Before we go deeper, I do want to put this disclaimer. I'm making this video to suggest competitive changes not only for the amateurs and pros competing in the upcoming Pro League and Challenger ladders, but I'm also advocating for the viewer experience as well. Certain aspects within Escalation 2.0, especially within the weapon trees, are difficult to follow and understand, especially if you're just watching casually. The upcoming changes that I'm suggesting are to increase understanding of the weapon build pass, create more counterplay with the weapon placement process, and provide competitive diversity from game to game. I do want to take time to highlight some of the best changes from the previous version of Escalation to now. In the previous version of Escalation, Rounds were won by a team reaching a score of 210 points or capturing all the objectives on the map. It may sound simple, but it became confusing as teams earned 1 point for controlling a single hill, but only 1.5 for controlling two. Escalation 2.0 improved on the win conditions and added a third to the mix. Teams now need to reach a score limit of 250 points. They earn 1 point per second for every hill they control and can win the round automatically by controlling all the objectives. The third win condition is simple. Eliminate the enemy team before they can respawn and the round ends. The elimination victory is only possible as Escalation 2.0 implemented a new respawn system. This gives players a limited set of respawns versus the infinite number in the original version of Escalation. Trying to create a competitive environment where every life matters. Players start with a reserve life pool of 5 which they are only able to access after a set time penalty. The respawn system allows for a maximum of 5 lives. Players can earn a single life back to their pool after each round, but if they run out of lives during a single round, they lose their ability to respawn. After the 6th round, the life pool is reset back to 5. While I think this change adds more depth to the respawn system, I would like to see a reduction in the starting pool of lives. This would allow for more risk and rewards to the system. Players would start with 3 lives in reserve and have the potential of reaching the maximum of 5. This will require players to allocate their lives and resources appropriately or they will only have limited opportunities in the later portions of the match. As Escalation is an objective based game mode with heavy resource allocation, the next portion of this video is going to cover the weapon trees. While the foundational premise for the weapon trees is very good, they lack clarity and competitive balancing in their current iteration. As certain resources are too readily available with little to no cost and also lack appropriate counterplay. Before we dive deeper, I do want to emphasize that the weapon placements are an essential element to escalation, but they need to be easy to follow for casual viewers as well as the competitive. A viewer who has played Gears of War before should be able to follow a team's weapon placements easily and understand the next weapons coming in the tree. Let's look at the current version of the primary or centerline weapon trees. While some weapons follow the theme of their faction such as Swarm Hammer Burst into Claw or the DB Enforcer into the Overkill, others seem to progress haphazardly like the Shock Grenade into Embar or Retro Lancer into Longshot. As it currently stands, the final tier for every power weapon is a Drop Shot or a Boom Shot. This may follow the theme of Escalation Escalating, but it hasn't led to any competitive diversity within the pro scene. As certain weapons and resources currently have massive priority because they're easily available power at low cost inside of the meta. Yes, I am talking about this meta. As it stands, the marks and the drop shot are currently the most prioritized weapons within every map of competitive escalation. The marks has 20 or 30 rounds allotted to it depending on its placement on the map. As a precision rifle, the Marx's damage output allows for 3 shots to the head for a kill or 4 shots to the body for a down. Its current tier position, it is the most accurate and efficient power weapon available. The drop shot priority comes from its ability to break enemy positional setups or hold off the enemy's advancements. While it only has a single round on the secondary weapon placements, teams usually reduce the spawn time in halves to have multiple uses. As thrilling as the current meta is, I believe if we change some of the functionality within the weapon trees, it will help push the competitive diversity and also the watchability of Escalation forward. Before we get any further, understand these are just prototype ideas and how we can revise the weapon trees. I'll be breaking each of them down individually and justifying them as needed. We'll be starting off with the secondary weapon placements before looking deeper into the primaries. Each of the trees now follows the thematic correlation with the faction or weapon type within the Gears universe. I've also added the pistols into the weapon trees. 
This is to balance out the power of the Boltok within the precision tree and allow the utilization of the Talon within the rifle tree. One of the other changes you'll notice is that I've broken down the weapons into several different tiers. The first and second tiers are only available to be placed on the secondary weapon placements, while the third and fourth tiers are only available on the secondary weapon placements after investing the appropriate amount of resources. I do want to add these rules before moving on. Weapons regardless of their tiers cannot exist in the secondary and primary weapon slots. To reach the fourth tier weapon on your secondary, you must build through the entire weapon tree. Tier 4 weapons cannot be upgraded or exchanged, they can only be disabled. For example, if you want to change the Boltok into a Marksa, you must upgrade it into a Longshot first. But if the Longshot is placed in a primary weapon slot, you cannot move further up the tree until the Longshot has been upgraded into a Marksa. This will enable you to place the Longshot in place of the Boltok on your secondary. The foundation for our new weapon trees begin with the smoke grenade. Upon placing the smoke, you are now able to build into the swarm or the precision trees. The swarm tree will lead into a more supportive and suppressive class with access to the hammer burst and eventually the claw. The precision tree, on the other hand, adds more lethality to your team, bringing the boltock, longshot, and eventually the marksa into the mix, but try not to miss as the ammo in this tree is scarce. The next secondary trees build out of the Gears 5 flashbang. But unlike the current Escalation 2.0, you only get a single flash per secondary placement. While the grenade tree is pretty self-explanatory, I do think we should take some time to look deeper into the rifle tree. The two biggest changes to the rifle tree are the additions of the Tier 2 Talon Pistol and the Lancer GL. Before you start tweeting at me and trying to invalidate this entire video, I'm not saying to give a grenade launcher on the secondaries. I just want the better version of the Lancer. Let me show you what I mean. If you aren't aware, the Lancer and the Retro Lancer both have close range damage reductions built into their kits. The only Lancer that doesn't have this damage reduction is the Lancer GL. Also a fun fact for anybody that made it this far into the video, the default snub is the most consistent close and medium range damage in the game. As you can see in the example, the Lancer GL deals the same damage as the Lancer, but without the damage reduction. The last tree for the secondaries of the flashbang is the DB tree, which houses the Enforcer, Overkill, and Embar. Now that we've covered the new secondary weapon trees, let's transition back over to the primary weapon placements. In this iteration of Escalation 2.0, the Boomshot, Dropshot, and Torque Bow are exclusive Tier 4 weapons to the primary weapon placements. The only other weapons that can be placed on these nodes are the tier 3 and tier 4 weapons from the previous slides. Except these versions have bigger clips and allow for more utility and control. Thanks for watching my suggestions for Escalation 2.0. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment below.